<laughs> hey Lily. Hey. We're doing another Thrifty Gaming Pickups episode, except this time we're doing it with game shops. Are you ready? Anyways, hey, what's going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and uh, this is my dog, Lily. She normally accompanies me on these episodes, and this is technically episode five? Yeah, five, shake, thank you. Yeah, this is technically episode five of Thrifty Gaming Pickups, um, and this is a little bit different because this is about video game shops. Um, now, normally what I do is this series consists of me, hey, that's new. This series consists of me going to video game, uh, well, no, going to thrift stores and showing what I've picked up video game wise. But I decided to do kind of this spin off episode because this weekend it was uh, 4th of July weekend and uh, I decided to go to quite a few shops. And uh, I also went to game stores and I got good deals, but they're not thrift store deals, you know? Like in the previous episode, episode 4, I got like a stack of 9 games, technically 10, for 12 bucks. You're not going to be seeing that here. I still got good deals. Um, but they're video game store related deals. Um, not so much, you know, stuff that we'd be seeing uh, at a thrift shop. So, uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be delving into this and seeing what we got. And the first thing is something I actually forgot to show you in episode 4. This is a, uh, this is the only thing you're going to see in this episode that I picked up from a thrift shop because I forgot. But this is a uh, Wii Mario Kart racing wheel uh, that I ended up get, picking up for 5 bucks. From what I saw, not a terrible deal, but also not nothing to, you know, really brag about nonetheless. I looked, and I was just like, you know, I looked up online, and I was like, eh, you know, five bucks I would still say is good for this, especially since it's the official Nintendo one. It's in pretty solid shape, too, honestly. Like, I might just clean it, and that's about it. But it's in solid shape. I've never had one of these. Five bucks, I think that's pretty solid, especially for official hardware. So that's the only thing I got from a thrift shop in this episode, but the rest of the stuff right here that you're seeing... I got from video game stores. So just to keep it in my memory here and keep it all clear, uh, I'm going to be going in the order that I went to these stores. Um, so the two really I went to, technically three. So the first one I went to is a chain, and Lily, why are you giving me that look? First one I went to is a chain, and it spans quite a few states, but it's called Vintage Stock, otherwise known as a movie trading company. Uh, Vintage Stock seems to be the more popular name though. So I decided to go there, and they were having a buy two, get one free deal on all video games, as many places were. GameStop was doing the same thing. So uh, I was actually with my buddy Sean that day, and uh, I decided to uh, pick these up right here. So I ended up getting Fade to Back, excuse me, Fade to Black on PlayStation. Got the long box variant here. I'm trying to get all these long box games, but I decided to pick that up. Uh, Sega GT 2002, along with Jet Set Radio Future. Uh, I'm, I might... I'm not 100% sure, but I might have this back over at my parents' house. The problem is, I've been wanting to play it for a while, and this is not a rare game. It's just every time I find it, though, there's something wrong with it, like the case is messed up, or the disc is messed up, or it's not fully complete, or whatever it is. There's actually one, so quick story about this, there's one at Salvation Army that Sean and I went to. There's one that we went to, and I see this every time I go there. There is a pristine-looking copy of this game, and even when you open it, it's complete, it looks great, but when you take this out, and when you flip the disc over, it's cracked. And it breaks my heart seeing that, man. It breaks my heart seeing that. <laughs> so I decided to pick this up, and Sean was kind of laughing, because he's like, Danny, you finally got it. I was like, yeah, I, I know. It's been teasing me. Um, but yeah, no, I ended up getting this. And I also got uh, Rise of the Kasai, which is a sequel to The Mark of Kree, uh, a game that I very much loved as a kid. I uh, definitely played it quite a bit, and I own it. But I've never played or owned the sequel right here, so I decided to pick up the sequel. These all together, after tax, were about 16 bucks, so I feel like that was all right. Um, then coming over, so next place I went to, uh, I've done a store tour over this place, but uh, it was Gamers HQ, which is my buddy Caleb's shop, and I absolutely love that store. I love him, no homo as well, but uh, love him as a person who manages the store and all that. And uh, I always try, whenever I visit uh, in Topeka, I... Now, whenever I visit, I always try and go over to his shop. And normally when I go there, I, I get a few things. And I actually went there <laughs> three different times this holiday, right? Um, so I ended up going there, and this is the first big stack. Um, now, some of the things I'll say that prices up, some of them, like, some of them were cheap, some of them were a little bit more. The price kind of fluctuated. Also, full disclosure here, I actually did get a discount as well, too. So that's why if I say the prices of the games, they're not going to fully reflect how much I spent. 
Uh, but I got a discount just because I did the video for him. I've known him for a while. I'm a friend of the store, all that stuff. Just putting it out there. But I decided to get Automodalista. Uh, never owned this game. Never played it. Always wanted to, though. Got that on PS2. Mafia 2 on 360. I actually owned this very briefly, but I sold it because I was able to flip it for more money. Um, and this specifically is the uh, Plat Platinum Hits variant, which I normally wouldn't gun after. But check this out. This one has the game, the additional story packs, and the four style packs. So what I'm trying to say is it also has a second disc. If you're going after Mafia 2, get the Platinum Hits version. I'm telling you, I know this is something that normally collectors don't say, but you're going to get the better mileage out of this because it is the complete edition, except they sold it at the discounted Platinum Hits price. So we went ahead and got that. We're good on there. Death by Degrees. Never played this. Always wanted to play it, though. Metal Gear Solid 3 Subsistence. I actually have Snake Eater, but I've never owned Subsistence. Decided to pick this up. Project Eden. Played it as a kid. Enjoyed it. Never finished it, but wanted to pick it up. Silent Hill 2. Specifically, the Greatest Hits Edition. I actually have an incomplete version of the regular PS2 edition. I have the Collector's Edition of the PAL European version, but I got the Greatest Hits one because apparently this is allegedly the best version to play if you want to play it on PS2. Apparently, the PS2 version of Silent Hill 2 is better than the Xbox port, better than the PC port. Uh, and on top of that, the Greatest Hits version, much like Mafia 2, actually contains all the extras that Silent Hill 2 Rest of Streams on the Xbox had. So again, if you're gunning after Silent Hill, specifically Silent Hill 2, you want to go after the Greatest Hits version if you're getting it on PS2. Uh, I mean, if you get the original one, it's not like it's broken, it's just the original game, but this one has the bonuses. This right here was the most expensive game I had picked up, Silent Hill Shattered Memories. Before discount, this was 50 bucks. This was an asking price of 50 bucks. And this game's weird. It never got cheap. I actually own all the variants of this. I have the uh, the Wii variant, I have it on PSP, and I just got it on PS2. And the reason why I waited to get it on PS2 is because it was the most expensive. Like the PSP one, I got brand new earlier this year. Brand new, I'm telling you. Brand new, still in the packaging, for 20 bucks. Uh, the Wii version, that gets up to 25, 30 used. This one's like 50 or 60 dollars used. I think it's because of the time it came out and when did it get released? It came out in 2009, so that was like a really rough time for PS2 games to be coming out because, you know, that was four years into the 360's life cycle, three years into the PS3's life cycle, so not that many people were trying to get a brand new game on PS2. Uh, but because of that, unfortunately, the game just never got cheap. So that was probably the best I could get unless I picked it up at a thrift store. And by the way, this is also 30 bucks because, again, Silent Hill 2, it started appreciating in value. The Silent Hill game started appreciating, so that was the most expensive one. Now, speaking of that, Zone of the Enders got this right here. Happy I got the complete edition. It actually has the um, Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty demo, which, funny enough, is in Japanese and subtitled in English, so that's a really nice touch. Um, owned this as a kid, but I think I got rid of it because also, um, it's just the condition wasn't as good. But got a pretty solid condition one right here. And then speaking of what I was talking about, the values right there. Decided to pick up Zone of the Enders, the second runner. Which, this game started getting up there. It's weird. Like, this game, it was getting expensive for some time. I think it was up to like 30 40 50, maybe even $50. Um, but this thing right here, the asking price was 12 or 13 bucks on this. This right here, Zone of the Enders 1, it never really got valuable. It was probably, this one was $8. Um, it never really got that expensive. It always depreciated. This one here, I swear, it went up in value, and then it came back down. Don't really know why, but decided to pick it up on PS2. So, now I have both the Zone of the Enders games on PlayStation 2. Then I decided to finish out my Onimusha um, series. And this weekend, I actually got all the Onimusha games. That's really cool. This one's probably my favorite, actually, because uh, Onimusha 2 Samurai Destiny. I've only played the first one and the director's cut, which was uh, Jinma Onimusha. I believe that's how you say it. But check this out. Look at that. Look at that. Right there. Onimusha 2 Target Exclusive Trading Cards. Now, they're probably not included in here, right? Check this out. Look at this. Look at this. They're included. The trading cards are included in this, guys. And on top of that, they're still brand new. They've never been opened. This game came out, wh when did this come out? Probably 2002? Yeah, 2002. So this is just a 15-year-old pack of cards that was only available at Target. It's never been opened. I'm not going to open it. I'm, I'm not going to open it, man. But that just that made me smile. And that might have been one of my favorite pickups of uh, this weekend. 
for sure. Uh, but no, got Onimusha 2, Samurai's Destiny. Onimusha 3, Demon Siege. Onimusha Blade Warriors. And Onimusha Dawn of Dreams. Now, check this out. I actually ended up having to go back there. I'll just knock out all the Gamers HQ stuff real quick. Uh, but I had to go back there. So this whole stack of games was about 120 bucks or so. Um, I know, a lot more than thrift store prices. But uh, still, you know, I felt like the prices were fair. And then also I got the discount on it, which... I don't really even fully expect discount. It's more just kind of go up there. I'm like, hey, I'm Danny. You all might or might not know me. Uh, Caleb knows me. I did this. And this, the employees know me at this point, so they're more than happy to help out. Uh, but then I actually, hold on, actually, scratch that. So aside from that right here, let's exclude this. This stack was about $120. And I had to go back, and I'm going to be explaining this here real quick. So let me pull out a few of the problematic games right here. You might be asking why I'm saying problematic, and I'm going to explain it. So let me move this over. Lily, you could take those. That'd be great if you did that. You want to just hang out over there? All right. Cool. You can just hang out there. That's fine. So what happened was I started, you know, that night I was going through the games and stuff, and uh, I ended up grabbing these three games out. Now, you're saying there's probably nothing really wrong with them, and that's true, but I actually had to go back to the store and... Uh, again, you know, if you're ever in Topeka, Kansas, Gamers HQ, hit them up. They're super awesome. They took care of me, not just because I know them personally, but just because they're really awesome people there. Uh, but I ended up pulling these three games out, and I just explained it to them. This one right here, because they have duplicates in the back, you know, so sometimes if, if you bring up a blank, a empty case to the front, they'll give you a duplicate they add in the back. This one, I actually end up getting the regular edition of Mafia 2. And I just explained it to them. I said, hey... I ended up, I bought this because I wanted to get the Platinum Hits version that has all the games right here. And, uh, well, that has all the DLC. And you all end up selling me or sending me home with the regular edition of it. Not so much the Platinum Hits edition, which is what I wanted. So that was really easy. You know, he just took back the regular version. He gave me the Platinum Hits version. This game right here, Onimusha Blade Warriors. This one's in much better condition. And the case also won the original ones, but I just said straight up, I was like, hey... The original case, it like, it was a really janky case. It wasn't very good condition. And it looked like there was like rat poop inside of it, like inside the case. And also it got like on this as well too. And I just straight up said, I was like, hey, you know, the cover kind of dirty, kind of nasty on here. The case as well too. Could I get it? Could I just get another case and cover? And they just swapped it out for the one in front there. Now this one was funny. I ended up, when I got a chance to look at it, I did not get Dawn of Darkness. I end up getting Onimusha Warlords, which is the first one which I already own. So I didn't really want a second copy of the first one. And I looked at my receipt, and it said that I picked up the first game, which I didn't intend to. So what happened was, they end up taking this, they grabbed a copy of Onimusha 1 in the back, and they sold that to me instead. And I just explained to them, I said, hey, I wanted to get Onimusha, I wanted to get Onimusha Dawn of Dark Dreams. I didn't get it, I got the first one. Is there a way, could I just like refund this one, like return it and get this instead and I'll pay the difference? And they were so cool. With these ones, it was a straight sw stop and swap, no issue. But with this, I said, hey, I'll pay the difference. Now again, I got a discount on it. Um, but with this, they said, um, you know what, we can drop this down to 10 bucks. And this is a $25 game. So I was like, wait a minute, are, are you sure? Are you sure? Because that's, that's quite a bit. They're like, yeah, dude, we're really sorry about that. You had to come back. You didn't need to do that. But we messed up on three different things. Um, no, 10 bucks, it's yours. So, of course, I said, yeah, sure to that. I was going to get it anyways. But, you know, 10 bucks, and I got my discount on top of that. And so these ones, that was straight stop and swap. But I end up getting this right here. So Onimusha, Dawn of Dreams. I also end up getting Crash Bash. Never owned this game. So got to pick it up, was quite happy about that. And I also got Fade to Black right here. Um, and all together, I think that was about $24. So that wasn't bad for all these right here. Fade to Black, got now I have both variants of it. I have the jewel case version and the long box version, which funny enough, it's in, check this out, it's in one of these like sandwich style like double cases. It's not. It's like 7 Filter 3. It's supposed to have a manual, it doesn't have a manual, but it just came in one of these big ones for whatever reason, man. So, yeah, end up getting those three on my second ride there. And then my third time, yes, I went there the third time. Uh, I actually met up, shout out to this guy, his name's Tristan. Uh, end up meeting up with this guy who is a fan of the channel um, and also a fan of Gamers HQ, but I met up with him there. 
Um, and then I decided to pick up some games while I was talking with him and stuff. Now, this stack here was about $46, um, but this was, I ended up getting these games. Uh, I got Project Overkill. Never owned this game, actually. I've never owned this, never played it. Wanted to give it a shot, though. It looks interesting. Kind of crappy, but also interesting at the same time. Resident Evil 2. I got this specifically because it is the DualShock variant version, which has a few bonus things. So uh, I decided to pick this up. This again, one of the, the third game I got in all these like all these stacks right here. The third game where the greatest hits version is the superior version. Although you can find a DualShock edition because there was three versions of Resident Evil 2 on PlayStation. There was the original one, there was the Resident Evil 2 DualShock edition, and then there was the greatest hits version. And then there's the Greatest Hits version, which the Greatest Hits version is the DualShock version. So, pick that up if you can. Get the DualShock version if you're able to. Star Fox Adventures. Decided to pick this up on GameCube. Don't have a complete copy, so not have a complete copy. And Resident Evil Outbreak. Never owned this game. Decided to pick it up. I know there was Resident Evil Outbreak and uh, Outbreak File 2. Never played either of them. Never picked any of them up, but I now own the first one. So I think that was also a good pickup as well. Now for these other things right here, also decided to go to another vintage stock and they are having a buy two get one free and I got several different things. So I'll show you all what I got right here. End up getting, I believe this is Wipeout 2 just because of the quote right there. But uh, Wipeout 2 on PlayStation. This thing is in immaculate condition, great condition. Look at this, I also got the other Italian job. For anyone who did not see episode 4 of this, uh, I end up getting uh, the Italian job on PS2, which the Italian job came out as a game, and then they made a movie based off it, and they made a, mo a game based off the movie based off the game. So I now own the game and the game based off the movie based off the game. I should probably pick up the movie at some point. Oh man, a few weeks ago they actually had a Blu-ray of... Uh, there was a shop that had a Blu-ray of the Italian job. I should have picked it up then, so I have a complete set. <laughs> I might do that next time. Sheep. I've actually heard some cool things about this game. And check this out. It's also sealed. This thing has never been opened, guys. This thing's never been opened. It has the original PlayStation seal. I almost want to open it just to get that PlayStation smell. There we go. almost want to get it because of that. But yeah, no. Sealed copy of Sheep. So... Quite happy with that. Probably not going to be opening this up. This will be a fun item for the collection. Indigo Prophecy. Never played this, but uh, picked it up on Xbox. Red Ninja. Always wanted to play this. Picked it up. Jinma Onimusha. Had it. Sold it when I was younger because I didn't understand the game. Decided to pick it up. So now, actually, this weekend I had I picked up the entire... Actually, even technically because I got the first Onimusha, I returned it. I picked up the entire Onimusha series this weekend, but now I own all of them because I already own the first one, so now I have Jinma Onimusha, and I have the four other games on PS2. Excellent series, really excellent series. I'd really recommend uh, people pick it up. It's it's interesting. Again, though, only really played the first one, but I want to play the rest. <laughs> uh, Resident Evil Code Veronica X. Decided to pick this one up because it also has the Devil May Cry demo inside of it as well, so got a nice complete set of that. Narc on the original Xbox, and Destruction Derby on the original Xbox, the long box variant. Now, there was actually, uh, there was another PlayStation game I ended up getting, and uh, you know, Vintage Stock, they were also cool as hell about this. I'm trying to bring it up right now because I forgot what exact game it was, um, but no, the game was uh, Shockwave Assault. So I, I had a really nice, for the most part, nice looking long box variant of shockwave assault for the playstation that i end up getting in this bundle right here um unfortunately i had to return it the reason being is that when i looked at it and i had a closer inspection it was a one disc well i got one disc and it said disc one i researched it i looked on the back of the case it was a two disc game so i got it i got one disc for a two disc game so i just took it back there and i said hey look i think this was an honest mistake but this game is supposed to be two discs. I've looked up online. It says so on the back of the case. Uh, I only got one disc with it. What can we do here? And the thing that made it um, the thing that made it kind of uh, confusing is that again they were doing a buy two get one free sale. So I got nine games here, meaning that three of them I got for free. That game right there, the one I returned, was the free game. And they immediately asked me, "Was that the free game?" And I said yes. And they were cool though. They were just like, "Okay, you know what." 
uh, we'll go ahead and credit you for that. So we'll go ahead and credit you. Pick out something of equal value. If you get something that's more than that game, uh, you can just pay the rest of it in cash. And I said, okay, cool. Now, I actually, I was thinking of getting this game NARC. Um, I've heard some good and some bad things about it. Always wanted to check it out. I remember it releasing, but I never played it. But I was kind of thinking of this, but I decided to put, put it back on the shelf. However, because I had to return that game, I ended up getting NARC. So I had to return several things this weekend, but it all worked out. And then the last thing I ended up getting, right here, least exciting of them, although this game is really awesome. I've played it on the HTC Vive, and now I own it on PSVR, so it'll, be, it'll give me a good reason to pick up my, my uh, PSVR again. But Job Simulator, I picked up a physical copy, brand new Job Simulator from GameStop, 20 bucks. Uh, I also end up getting Robinson The Journey, which is another game I really wanted to check out. And I think after the discount and everything, I end up paying like about 18 bucks for that. Um, the reason why I don't have it here is because I had to order it. So I end up ordering that, but I got that as well too. Uh, because that game also, it's the last game that came from one of the Crytek studios. And it went from $40 to $20, and then you, you just can't find it. And I actually do want to play the game, as well as collect it. So... I figured now would be a really good time to get it, but that's to you all as well, too. If you all are interested at all in Robinson the Journey on PSVR, try and pick it up now while you can, because it's becoming very hard to find. Um, but yeah, that's about it. So this is all the stuff I ended up getting from game stores this uh, weekend holiday. I think it was a really good 4th of July holiday. I didn't spend any money on fireworks, man. I spent nothing on fireworks, but I spent quite a good amount on games. Anyways, this is Mr. Mario. Anyways, this is Mr. Mario signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, a like would very much be appreciated. If you disliked it, that's fine, too. But you're going to make this woof woof right here a very sad woof woof.